I'm surrounded by snow on the ground and yet I still have beautiful flowers, which is only possible because they are dried. We grow flowers and veggies here on our farm and this year we prioritize making sure we were saving dried flowers spring, summer, and fall. And because of that, we now have an abundance. We have so many dried flowers and we have an amazing range from all the seasons to get to play with. And I'm gonna share with you all of my favorites and how good they look dried. I still have my drying racks filled with an abundance of my fall crops, which looks like a lot, but I have a lot over here. There is bundles and bundles, multiple filled drying racks uh, stacked up here. And that isn't even the beginning because most of what I have is actually packed away into boxes, into storage. I have more dry flowers than I know what to do with. I know what you should do with them. Show them off. One of my favorite dried flowers is Status. I love it because it dries so vibrant and so bright and it looks almost identical <laughs> to, when, to when it's fresh. And so this is, just, this is just a selection of some of the colors and you can see how, how great they are. We only had a small patch of Status this year, but next year I'm gonna be growing four times as much, 10 times as much, I'm obsessed. It is one of my favorites and I want this everywhere. Just like the status, straw flowers dry almost identical to what they look like fresh. And look at these incredible vibrant colors. I love these yellows, there's these pinks, there's reds, there's burgundies, there's pale pinks, there's whites. There is so many colors in the straw flowers. And I mean, how can you not love the sound of them? The, I mean, these are, these are the classics right here. Um, I feel like you could have just status and straw flowers mixed together and it could be the perfect dried flower bouquet. But of course we're not gonna stop at that. We still have an infinite more of amazing things. One of my favorite new surprises this year is Larkspur. I had no idea that this would dry so incredibly and I had an abundance of it and I gave it an experiment and honestly, I feel like I like the dried Larkspur better than I like fresh Larkspur. The color, the way it held its colors, the shape of it, um, I, I'm very, very excited to have this. This is a spring crop that was really easy for me to grow. So I can grow and dry an abundance of this to have lots and lots for the winter. Doesn't it look great? Another spring crop that I loved dried and I'm going to do a better job of keeping them out of the light because these are a little bit faded at this point is ranunculus. These ranunculus, they are, they look so full and so fluffy, still dried. And even though these are like kind of a bit faded out, I really like it on the yellow. Um, these, you know, it, when the ranunculus is going, there's so many of them. So it was great to be able to dry them. Um, and they have such a unique look. They don't really look like any of my other dried flowers. Also from spring, I have yarrow. This yellow yarrow dried nice and bright. I also love the white yarrow. It dries a nice clean white. And then the pink yarrows I love because they dry into like a dusty rose, um, a deeper, richer color. And so I find it's really nice for blending. The yarrow, I can get lots of long stems um, and they look nice and full. So I love having lots of this to work with in the dried flowers. 
Feverfew is another abundant filler that I have lots and lots of on the farm in that early springtime, and it dries as an amazing filler. It's nice to have these like punches of color, um, but in the same with the fresh flowers, uh, the dried flowers, it's nice to have something that takes up some bulk. And so the, the Feverfew is an excellent option for that. And then finally in the spring, I had an insane abundance of snapdragons. I had more than I knew what to do with. And so this was an experiment for me. I didn't know how I was gonna feel about them dried, but I feel like they dried really nicely. Um, the, the colors are still quite vibrant and they're very unique. They don't really look like anything else. Um, so I don't know that I'd necessarily use them on their own, but when I blend these into bouquets, I really like the look. As the weather warmed up, I had even more options. These are two of my absolute favorites. I wanna grow an infinite more of these because people love these fresh and they love them dried. They have such a unique blue coloring and they hold on to that blue really nicely dry. So this is a sea holly and you know these big spiky balls and this is a larger variety but there's also smaller clustered varieties. And then this is an Echnops, these uh, little glitter balls and I love these. These are my favorite. <laughs> Zinnias is one of the main flowers that we grow here on the farm and I'm a waste not want not farmer so every single stem that didn't get used fresh got hung up. And this is one that, you know, not everyone loves dried but I love them. They're my favorite. They remind me of pom poms and they don't necessarily stay true to their color um, but they still have these incredible vibrant colors. You know, and even some of the more muted ones, this is the Lime Queen series dried. Even these, I find that they blend really nicely. They, they make these like really interesting textures in the dried flower bouquets. So even though you might not see them listed as someone else's favorite dried flower, it would definitely be in the top five for me. I love them. Another classic summer flower is sunflowers. And this is yet another one where they don't look the same when they're dried, but I feel like they still have a lot of fun, bright colors and they have these beautiful textures that are really fun to play with. So I think that they are definitely worth the effort to hang them to dry. Another cheery, bright flower, I can never have enough of those is Rubecchia. And these I love. When you hang them to dry, the petals are like so soft and delicate that they create these almost like twisted cages on the top of the stem. And I think they, I think they look so unique. And when they're put into the dried flower arrangements, they almost give this like movement. Uh, and even though, yet again, this is one that not everyone is convinced is great dried, um, but I, I love this specific look. And then my last cheery yellow favorite is marigolds. The puffiness of the flower when they dry, the petals all condense and they end up being these beautiful, beautiful little pom poms. Um, and I, I really love the way they look dried. Gomfrina is another great dried, similar to the straw flowers and the status in that they're, they're all crispy and fun. Um, I love the look of them. They almost look like clover flowers and they really hold their color, um, but they're quite small. Well, all these great bright, flowers are awesome to have for dried flowers. It's the same as making arrangements for fresh flowers. If all you have is flowers, it's not gonna be you know, a complete arrangement. You need those other bits and pieces. And so I have a lot of those to share too. I'm always looking for ways to take up lots of bulk <laughs> in the arrangements. And Celosia is excellent for that. It is bright and colorful and fun, um, but it's also very full and very, you know, filling, filling the space, very commanding when mixed with the other things. It comes in a whole range of colors and it doesn't matter if it's the fan, coxcomb, or plume style Celosias, they all are really great dried flowers. I also am obsessed with amaranth <laughs> um, for the same reason. It fills up so much space and I love the texture. I love the colors. This is brown hot biscuit and this is a deep burgundy 
uh, velvet curtain, but there's also the drapey styles. I have the coral fountain and there's the green drapey dreadlocks, the red drapey ones. There is lots of amaranths and they all dry great. As great as the celosia and the amaranth is for taking up space and adding bulk, what I've really been looking for is green. <laughs> it's the one thing that I've really struggled to dry. And this I know on the camera, I keep trying to share pictures of it. It really doesn't show how good it's, it's dried green. It looks kind of gray, um, but it's quite green in person. This is Sweet Annie and it smells great. It smells like right now I'm like, oh, it smells so good. Um, and it grows abundantly <laughs> and it is the perfect the perfect greenery for dried flowers. I'm, I'm really happy to have discovered this. Another excellent dried green is eucalyptus. I don't have an abundance of eucalyptus because we are zone five, we're up in Canada, so this is a struggle for me to grow. Um, but it, this is completely dried and you can see it really holds its color. I've also been experimenting with drying mints and this is a mountain mint and I'm really happy at how green it stayed and it smells great and <laughs> smells like mint. So there's lots of herbs that you can experiment. I have a few others that I've been testing too. This is an oregano and this has dried and it's kept its purple flowers quite quite bright and the green has dried really nicely. So I'm really happy with how this experiment has turned out. And then one that I dry an abundance of is this is a cinnamon basil. So this makes a beautiful dark, rich green for when I'm doing like reds and purples. I really like this and I love the texture and it has like a really nice smell. I've tried doing the green basils and I've tried doing the lemon basils and I can't get them to dry green enough. Um, but it's, it's worth an experiment. It could dry better depending on your location. And finally, my newest favorite fresh greenery, anise hyssop has, you know, I'm actually pretty happy with how it dried. The, the purple flowers actually held some color and the green dried pretty good too. So I definitely imagine I will be drying more of this in the future. Grasses also make excellent <laughs> dried flowers. What I have here is a millet. I think this is lime millet and then, and then another seed head grass. And this, you know, they look great dried. They, they look very similar to fresh and I love, the, I love the swaying movement that they have in them. You can also get very different looks depending on the different varieties that you use. This is still a grass. This is a miscanthus grass and this, it, it blooms in the fall and then when you pick it, it just explodes open. So it, it doesn't shed too bad. You can see it's not falling apart, um, but this just totally different look than anything else that I grow. So I love, I love having these. And then finally, there is seed heads and seed pods, which I don't have very many examples of. This is one of the flowers when it finishes. I love this brown spiky bit and dried or fresh, they look pretty much exactly the same. And I love having textures like this, things that look quite different in the dried flowers. Another really good example, which I don't have any to share with you is to use poppy seed heads. Um, but I've used a huge variety of stuff. I've used mustard green seed heads to be big, long, spiky pieces. There's lots and lots of options. All I can share with you in this video is what I have on hand. Um, but I hope by sharing some of the more different and more weird things that you don't see as a classic dried flower, it will inspire you to look through your garden and your specific area and come up with things that maybe would dry really well for you. Um, I know when I went to play with the dried flowers for the very first time, I didn't realize how important it was gonna be to have those extra little weird bits and pieces. You know, it's easy to gather up, you know, some beautiful straw flowers and a couple other punchy, fun, colorful things. Um, but you need a little bit more than that to be able to create the, the final full piece. Um, so I, I really encourage you to experiment. A ton of the stuff that I have to play with um, isn't stuff that was like, oh, I know this is gonna be a good dried flower. I know for sure this is a good one. It's stuff that I was like, you know what? It doesn't take much to just throw 10 stems up on the drying rack and see how it turns out. 
Um, and then after that, you also want to give it a little bit of time to see if it's going to fade out or um, discolor after it started into drying. So, you know, the, your imagination is your limit for dried flowers and hopefully seeing all these examples, you will be excited just like me to have a dried flower garden next year. What was your guys' favorite of the dried flowers? Let me know down in the comments and also check out this video where we made an entire display of dried flowers for a romantic comedy. Are you filming this just to laugh at me? Yeah. Okay, move through the door. I can't go, I have to go sideways because I have too many.